Hey everybody, this is Purge. Um, I get a lot of questions about comic conventions and Artist Alley, in particular, charging for signatures. And it feels like a lot of people have opinions on this topic. Um, you know, my foremost opinion on this is, you know, person who's charging for signatures or not charging for signatures gets to decide. That is the kind of first and foremost opinion. Now, there's a lot of opinions I have on this topic. I, you know, I, I believe that in general, um, you know, you should set limits and be reasonable about it. But if you are setting up a table and you're doing commissions and you're doing, you know, kind of those activities, then it's better if you're not charging for commissions because think overall you're building a brand, building a business. It's, it's a, it's a decent thing to do. Um, but, uh, you know, I acknowledge that for some it's, you know, it's, it's, it's money and it, you know, it's their business to do it, but Anyway, this reader is asking a question about it. Let's let's get into it. And I think this is one where I'm curious to see your opinions in the comments, what you think about the practice of charging um, for autographs and signatures at conventions. So here it goes. Um, it says, good day. Good day to you, sir. Hope the family is well. You asked about charging for autographs. My answer is too long for YouTube. So here goes. I used to think it was bullshit 40 years ago when it was your job to sell a book. I kept my lunch money to buy those damn things. Now, 40 years later, because schmucks are selling signed books on eBay for more than they're probably worth, I have to pay to have them signed. I was your marketing department telling all my friends to read comics to check yours out. Now, instead of a thank you, I get to pay. I still have comics I had when I was in grade school. I do think there should be a limit. I saw a guy in 2002 want to have Peter David sign a long box of his books. I've seen that too. And everybody spots these people, by the way, when you like you're going to a convention and um, you, uh, you know, you, you see the person walking around there with a short box. Usually it's a short box. I, I haven't seen I've seen long boxes being carted around, but not often. But anyway, you're, you're wandering around this year. You see a person with a short box filled with comics headed for Artist Alley. And, you know, like that person is just going to be an asshole to be behind in line. Um, but anyway. Um, it will be back to the mail. It says, uh, that's too much, but five issues should be free. It's eBay and CGC's fault. Okay. I also think if you're an artist and I buy a sketch from you, you should sign my books for free limit imposed. Okay. I think, uh, then I think about the time you did a video on Bill Jaska, you and he, uh, put the doubts in my mind. What a terrible way to die. I don't know, uh, that I would wish that on my worst enemy. Um, this is the case where, you know, comic creators at times fall into you know, fairly terrible poverty, um, you know, because they're not taking care of anything else. And so then as a, as a creator or sorry, as a fan, you start to think, well, shit, why am I being so, you know, why am I bitching about $5 for a signature when uh, some of these, you know, creators are eating dog food and starving to death because, you know, their companies aren't taking care of them and, you know, they have no work and that's, that seems wrong. So I should just suck it up and pay the $5. And the thing is, both can be true. You know, I, it, it is a case that, you know, oh, well, I'll put it to you a different way. And maybe this is not going to make people feel warm at night, but it is what it is. Um, if there's an artist that's, that's starving to death or somebody in comics who has uh, not saved their money and is, is really struggling, and there are those, um, $5 for your signature is, is not going to help that situation. I mean, it's, it's not nothing, but there's a deeper problem in play there. And, you know, you should try and, you know, when I say we, I really mean publishers, others need to find a way to help in this situation and help get the person work and, you know, everything else if they deserve it. Um, but, you know, if we're trying to solve this problem, and I, I guess that's one of the issues I have with comics, is too often big problems in the industry are actually passed off to the fans to deal with. You know, case in point, you know, it's, it's, um, Hey, you know, we can't bother to make a commitment to the creators on this comic book. You know, yeah, we're backed by a billion dollar corporation, but we can't, we can't bother to make any kind of long-term plan unless the fans themselves kind of demand and get involved and, and push for the book to be renewed, which feels like it's a, you know, you're, you're pawning off your own responsibility to actually have a decent plan for your publishing line. Um, that, that kind of stuff annoys me. I, I think, you know, that this is, you're a company, this is your job. You need to actually, you know, think these things through. 
and saying, you know, hey, we're going to get the fans involved. I mean, cool, you can get the fans involved, but I find it also strange that an industry will simultaneously tell us the fans are wrong, the fans don't know what they want, you can't listen to the fans, the fans are uh, toxic, the fans are irritating, we hate those, those, uh, those annoying fans on social media. P.S., Hey, if uh, the fans, you know, if, if people want this book to go past two issues, then the fans are going to need to be involved and, and push and pressure local comic shops and everything else. It's like, how about you do some effing marketing to your local comic shop? Hey, you know, many, many years running a comic shop, and it's still the case. A lot of comic retailers get their information around guest appearances, special things coming up in a comic, other, you know, aspects that are important to their, you know, their retail business. They get those things from the fans. They don't get those things from the publisher who frequently ignores that marketing or buries it inside some, you know, half-witted solicitation somewhere. Anyway, we're off track, but uh, uh, we'll go to the, the we'll close this mail because we're almost at the end. So Stanley, a year before he died, was charging $100 to sign a book. Did he need the money? I don't know if he did. Uh, but you know, again, I think it's, first of all, it, it is the right of the person showing up. You drag your ass to the convention and you set up a table and you're doing your thing. Um, if you think you can charge for an autograph, that's that's your business. Um, I remember, uh, you know, I, I had done some, some drawings of a bunch of, uh, you know, actors back when I was younger in kind of a manga style. And I sent them off to get signed because there was a, you know, there was at the time you could go and buy a book. This is somewhat pre-internet, but you can go buy a book and it would have like addresses of celebrities. I mean, it's also innocent back then. I mean, you think about such a thing now, it's like, ooh, that wouldn't be a good idea. But, you know, back in the 80s, it's like, here's a book filled with addresses of celebrities. And if you're ever in town, you can drive by and take a photo of their house. Like this was, this was something that, you know, people, again, it was a book you bought in uh, good old Walden books. Um, but I made these pictures and I sent them off to get autographed and what was always telling to me is I'd, I'd get kind of different responses and who would do what. I remember, um, William Shatner, uh, wrote a note back saying, Hey, um, I'll sign this, but you have to pay me. And if you pay me, I'll return your art. So he kind of held the art hostage until I paid him. Um, so I, you know, I, I, I did, I gave him like 10 bucks and then he sent it back. It was, it was very strange. Um, Christian Slater, I remember, uh, sent back the artwork, uh, not only signed, but sent like headshots and, and uh, some other stuff. Um, and then, um, the, 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 the weirdest one was, uh, John Travolta because, uh, and this was a little bit later. This was when Pulp Fiction came out for, for him. I had sent this uh, picture in, in kind of a manga style of the Pulp Fiction characters. And my idea was I would get it signed by all the main characters or the, the main actors, and um, John Travolta, I, I don't know why I sent it to him first. Not only did he sign it and not charge for it, but he took it upon himself to figure out how to get Uma Thurman and Samuel Jackson and uh, Bruce Willis to sign it. And uh, he took, I mean, he, I, I didn't know where all those people were, but basically he went and hunted these people down, got it all signed, sent it back, along with the, this little note of recommendation about... Uh, Hey, this guy's a good artist, and uh, you know if if he pursues an art program in college, you know you you would you should take him. It was like he, he gave me a letter of recommendation. I didn't ask for any of these things. I just sent the thing in to get signed. But anyway, you get all different types. Um, it is funny because, and a lot of us I'm sure have experienced this, where if you have a good experience with somebody, be it a comic creator or a celebrity or whoever it is, if you have a good experience, that good experience will wallpaper over a lot of, of bullshit. So, I, I mean, I remember many, many years later, people complaining about John Travolta like being a, a you know, prima donna or prick or something. And I remember going to that guy's aggressive defense of, no, you say, you know, th this, I had this one good experience and, you know, th that's, that's unreasonable. I, I remember watching a bunch of John Travolta films I did not want to watch uh, because I felt such a, a feeling of gratitude to this guy. Um, so it's, it's funny. I say that because in comics, there is this um, pseudo war against fans at times that, that catches up. And I will tell you, if you just 
you know, first of all, ignore the Twitter nonsense about who you're supposed to like and who you're not supposed to like. Yes, it does mean that, you know, Heidi McDonald is going to show up one day at your table and ask if you're a Nazi. But if you just ignore that kind of stuff and you just do these things that really often take no work of being super nice and generous to a fan, you are basically buying a PR agent that's going to go out there and, and just push for you till the end of time. It's, it is the best. You know, I, I use the example of a, a good guy, Jim Zub, is somebody who, um, and I, I somebody weighed in at one point, uh, pissed off at Jim Zub, but 99.9% but .9 of the people I talked to love the guy. Like, like, this guy is friendly, he is nice, I can tell that he's arguing with me on this thing, but he's still doing it in a nice way. It's very, like, almost, it's a stereotypical Canadian. Like, he's just, even when we disagree, he's being nice. And I, I watch people who, you know, I, like, I, I know there were people who are not fans of Conan go and pick up his book for no other reason than they felt a desire to pay it back to a guy who was nice to them. And then they found out they got a good comic on their hands. It's, it's that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, back to the topic of autographs. Look, my own personal feeling, you shouldn't charge for autographs. It's good marketing, I think. Espe but especially if, if you're doing a commission for somebody, if somebody's coming and paying you, you know, 150 bucks for a commission or more, and um, they want a couple comics signed, for Christ's sake, don't, you know, sign the comics. Um, I do agree completely with the limits. Like, you can't have people show up there with, like, 50 comics. I've seen plenty of people do the... I'll sign three. I'll sign five. I, I think that's absolutely fair game. No issue with that. Totally reasonable. Um, you know, totally fair. I think that, you know, but but again, if if you are an artist or a creator and you want to sign, you want to charge, and that's that's what you want to do. I, I no, nobody's going to stop you. I don't think. I, I've seen places like we should make a rule that you can't charge for autographs at a convention. No, I don't. We don't need a rule everybody's a big boy and girl. They get to decide for themselves what they want to do. Um, I just think the, the marketing opportunity for signatures is, is really high. And so if you, if you're willing to do that, that's great. Um, I do think the eBay, you know, CGC gain, uh, con, whatever you want to call it is, uh, is bullshit. Um, but you know, again, there's business there too. So whatever, whatever you got to do, pal, um, that's, that's the way I see it. Anyway, how do you feel? charge don't charge you know what, what do you think i know we've talked about this before on the channel but I, I guess the other thing i'll open up here is um have you had any experiences like this where a creator you you didn't even really care one way or another about was nice to you or did something good and you found yourself like aggressively in support of that creator whoever they might be um for the simple act of just being a good human being did you did, did you ever had experience like that i I've had many uh, conversation at conventions where creators will bemoan that uh, this, like, why aren't people more nice on social media? And these, the people who are often complaining about it have the absolute most toxic, worst attitudes on social media. They act like complete and utter pricks. They don't understand. Uh, this is one of those things where, um, you know, I also irritate people in my comments, but I did this video a while back. Remember it? It was the uh, creators don't get why you're mad at them. Like, they legitimately don't. A lot of them don't. I, I I know that you want to believe that it's all some kind of orchestrated plot and everything else, but there is a level of severe disconnect in people where they will post obnoxious, crazy bullshit on their Twitter feed. They will go at fans. They will, you know, completely be pricks. And then they will turn around and be completely confused why people don't like them. It is absolutely... It, baffling but anyway <laughs> let me know what you think in the comments below like and subscribe of course and thanks for listening